what people around the country, in all of our cities and in our villages, experience every day. And this is what really drew my mind to it yesterday on the show. I don't know who to go to. I don't know who to talk to. I don't know who to talk to. What is this? Is this marriage? Is this... You are being suppressed. You can't... You can't... Ex- you can't do what you want to do. You can't be yourself. You just have to keep quiet and you can't do what you want to do. You can't be yourself. You just have to keep quiet and say yes all the time. You can't ask questions. You can't... You can't suggest anything. You, you can't give advice. You are just there. And being manipulated and being controlled. And it's a shame that your husband is beating you and, and people can hear you shouting and people can hear you screaming and nobody comes to help you. Nobody comes to help you. And this is done in front of my son. This is done in front of my son. <laughs> and how you complain to his parents, his, his, his parents, they tell you that's not how they brought up their kids, and that's not how he is, and he's, he's not like that. And you are the liar. You are the liar. Oh, my God. <laughs> 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 oh, my God. Oh, my God. Oh, my God. Oh, my God. He lies about everything on top of his feet and gives you some disease that I'm, I'm carrying now. <laughs> that was Sarah who spoke with us on the Super Morning Show yesterday. She just called into the show, and I was very humbled, very disturbed, very distraught throughout the entire day, just trying to think about the priorities that we have been having as broadcasters. I am as guilty as anyone else you listen to. So I just want to speak to you, my fellow men. If you're a man and you're listening to me and you've done something like this, This, what we just heard, is the effect of your actions. What you just heard is what you are causing directly, if this is what you do. Maybe your partner is close to you now. You may want to take a step back and look at her in the face and say you're sorry. It may be simplistic for us to suggest that just a simple story could solve all the problems that you have. We know that we cannot begin to really diagnose what exactly is going on in your home, but... I don't think it destroys anything if you just take a step back, look her in the face, and say sorry. Thank you. Guys, let's go straight to the front page, shall we? Now, the new crusading guide is reporting this morning. Minerals Commission blows 379,180 Ghana City on three-day mining conference. And that is one story to expect in the coming days. But the stories, the other ones, of course, Africa must never permit slave trade. Nana Akufuado is the one saying so. And drones, medical supplies to start from July 2019. This year, some few months down the line, pressure mounts on government to investigate new single window deal. It's also on the front page of the new crusading guide. On the front page of the graphic business, chocolate imports cost $45 million. CPC repositions as better alternative. Consolidates BOG and three others into two regulators. Ama Amankwa Befi is asking, is it time for an agric emergency fund? And Ministry of Finance violates the MDF Act. Now, the news, the Daily Statesman is reporting this morning, Ghana pledges to back young pilot and also NDC Congress hangs by third and confab to pick flag bearer faces mass no to JDM revolt. There's one about the NDC adopting boot for boot. That's the picture of um, <laughs> boot for boot walk for victory. And <laughs> the, 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 the picture is interesting. No. Uh, the MP for the area and also JDM is on the front page of that thing but it's the boots that are competing in this case anyway. (laughs) Interesting. Mm. On the back page of the Daily Graphic, rehabilitation works on Tema Motorway progressing steadily. Kumasi Kejetia roads reopened to traffic and on the front page, medical drones to take off in the second quarter. Tashi desalination plant to resume operations in March and give us more time to effect Ropa Isibex court. The Chronicle is reporting this morning. KME clears hawkers from Kejetia and Sayo in NDC. Goosey wants printing of barrel papers halted. And of course, there's somebody who is purported to be close to him. That's Goosey Tano. But despite Cynthia Morrison's firm assurance, that is the gender minister in this case. Police countries 
are the girls. We don't know where they are. And that is why we are still searching for them. That is what the Chronicle is reporting this morning. On the front page of the Daily Guide, um, related to that story, um, the alleged Nigerian kidnapper Samuel Will says CID aided my escape. Men's Gold clients list out Valentine's Day court for Nam One, blows over regional capitals, and first IVF twins delivered in Takrade. Now, the Ghanaian Times is reporting this morning. Single window copyright case, stakeholders back court action in Ghana to produce seedlings for international market. This is according to the Agri Minister. Now, at the commemoration of the 400th anniversary of transatlantic slave trade, President of the Republic has been speaking. He says, We must restore pride, dignity of Africa. There's one on number one, two, but police investigate. JB Danquest's wife's uh, sexual harassment allegation. And that's on the front page of the Ghanaian Times, too. And finally, from me on the front page of the Finder, Zipline makes strides as Rwanda expands contracts to include emergency medicines. KMA opens Kejitia access roads to pre test human traffic. Port stakeholders back suit against Ghana Link and Unipass. Never again should Africans permit slave trade, that's according to President Adodankwa. And fierce legal battle over ROPA implementation erupts. So, Raymond, the Valentine's Day gift for men's gold customers? Yes, it's that the Ghanaian Times is quoting the Ghana News Agency and saying that the chief executive of uh, men's gold in this particular case, Anapia Mensa, is expected to make his third appearance in court. This is in Dubai on, on Thursday. I mean, he, he's facing the misdemeanor charge of a 23 million US dollar deal that's gone bad. But, Daniel... We understand that a misdemeanor in the UAE, that's the United Arab Emirates, is equal to second degree felon in this country. Mm. So, I mean, that is how serious the issue is yes. that he's facing. You know, when the issue came up as misdemeanor, they thinking that many had was a well, I mean, that, that slap one. on the wrist. Yeah, maybe. so why don't we bring him to this country to come and face the more serious charges, which is being considered in this case. But... He's currently still on remand at Al Bashar police cell. The understanding we also have is that the mm, he could also face other civil charges, which can land him in jail for almost a decade. And that's how compounding serious the, the issue is. Between three to uh, ten years is the case here. But there's also more to this point we know that the yoko was said to be doing some investigation mm -hmm. we also know that the bni had apparently given him bail he jumped the bail and that customers here in this country are still demanding that he be brought back they can get their money state has actually frozen accounts and other things in fact state has asked those who are in possession of properties belonging to the man or any of his conglomerate engagements to return them in their own interest as we seek to put them together, get a client list, which we understand now, seem to be uh, secure some way, somehow, so that we can know how to deal with the money going forward. So it may be that for one school of thoughts, Namwan or Nana Piamenta is facing the law and would be in jail for three to ten years, which could be good news for those who just want him to face justice. But for those customers who tie his return to Ghana to the return of their monies, it means, Raymond, that... Yeah, it's bad news for them. They, they are not excited at all. And even after he serves his time there, is it binding on Dubai to repatriate him back to... To Ghana. Yeah, of course, but what would be their interest in keeping him there? He's not their Good citizen. It was not, he's not like of any interest in there. In fact, they see him as a criminal in this case who they are prosecuting. So Good if you are being prosecuted for it, why would I keep you after that? But then for customers who need their money, it will be necessary for them to put pressure on the appropriate authorities to liquidate his properties if there are any uh, empty bank accounts, which we understand have very, very little account uh, monies in there, so that their monies are returned mm. to them. Speaking of monies, 50% of revenue from road tolls is lost to thievery. Any more. Yes, so the um, Minister for Roads has been speaking, Kwesia Markata. He was um, opening a new toll booth at Bedukrom in the Shama district. He says that um, about half of the revenue that we get from road tolls is lost. And because what happens is that, you know, when you get the um, ticket at the toll booth, what some people are doing is that they drop it on the floor right after they drive past. Now, um, he's saying that sometimes the hawkers and other people will pick up these tickets and then give it back to those who are selling. So when you, when another car is passing, you're getting 
an already paid for um, receipt. So, I mean, if you think about the Tema Motorway, for example, there's about 30,000 cars using that road every day, about 36,000 CDs per day, 252,000 CDs per week, and a million and eight thousand Ghana CDs per month. Now, if you're losing half of that, that's about 500,000 Ghana CDs a month. Um, just because people are reusing um, their tickets, then you can imagine that it is serious. He's speaking to those who man these toll booths and also the hawkers and stuff not to do this because we're shortchanging ourselves and he's also saying that when you get to the toll booth and you get a ticket just take a second and double check make sure that the time and the stamp date um are correct also when you get your ticket don't drop it outside keep it also in the don't car drop it so outside. that it can't be reused you're also literally if you just drop it outside yes outside course. like that so you're hitting us on two counts let's go to the investigation of the jb dankwe do Okay, so the brief update from that particular end, you know that when um, the wife made the allegations on her Facebook page, very damning allegations, including that of um, the man who is leading investigations in finding the killers of uh, her husband, seeking among other things to engage her in an amorous relationship. What? The police is now saying the first response from the police was that we have not received any report of such conduct. But the police is now saying that, well, we are going to investigate. We are going to get to the bottom of the matter because at least there's some inkling as to who are those behind this particular conduct and who might have acted unprofessionally. And we have systems within our unit to deal with issues like that because our standards are pretty clear. Our codes determine how you engage a potential suspect or a suspect and the kind of relationship you can have with a person in this case. So hopefully the police, unlike other cases where we have to push and keep on pushing and keep on trying to get outcomes of their investigations, this will be done quickly. In the meantime, though, don't you think it will be more appropriate that the case is reassigned if indeed they require so? Because what kind of relationship is this woman likely to have to with the investigator who's been because one as long as the allegations have been made no, whether yeah, they yes, are true so or not. yes we are not even going to whether they, in the throes of having mm. to determine their validity what we need to do is to make sure that the relationship between the two is not poisoned which is likely to affect the case in this case true. so the best thing to do now is to find a different person somebody who's not affected by this case to be able to handle it. So I give mm. confidence to the woman that regardless of what is happening, it's not affecting the particular issue that they are pursuing in this case. I agree. Yeah, yeah. I agree. Mm. And speaking of cases that we've had to push for the resolution of, mm -hmm. the Takwadi girl's kidnapping. Yes, and the Takwadi girl's kidnapping is also one issue that is also be raging. In fact, there's a recent court case. The court case was pretty clear. This is where the revelations about whether the police aided the young man or not came in. But now the court is asking the young man that no matter what the case is we need you to tell us your accomplices we need to give us a viable information that may aid in us capturing the person and dealing with that this may not necessarily reduce your sentence but it may it, it would make the court somewhat lenient towards your case so that is the latest from that end now the Police is making the same demand. You remember that the police said that the man has taken us to all corners and sometimes he gives us some weird place. We go and look at the place and we don't get any outcome from that. He's been sending us to places on some chase which is not really <laughs> yielding any results. But the other reports that the news press are also putting out is that, you know, the gender minister sought to intervene and insisted that we are still going to get this case no matter what. The report from the Chronicle is that even though she gave that promise, there's no guarantee that one, anybody has given them any firm evidence that the, the young ladies are still alive today. Two, the actions that have been taken by the police in any way does not in any way suggest that we are closing in on the girls. This is regardless of the fact that we sent a crack team to Takradi to go and actually push the matters. We understand that after the revelation from the suspect in this case, the people in Takradi who are affected by this incident are seeking, among other things, to get back on the streets, to pile more pressure on the people in office mm. to make sure that they bring back these tardy girls.
and we support every effort yeah. being made um, to raise awareness of this. Of course, the hashtag is still bring back our tidy girls. If you see something, say something. Let's stay in Takrade in Nimwa for some good news this time. Um, yes, yeah, so the first of our twins through in vitro fertilization have been delivered in Takrade. I'll tell you why this is good news, um, Daniel, because the infertility rate in Ghana is about 14%. Um, out of that, 23% experience moderate stigma, 41% um, the stigma affecting 41% out of that number is very, very, very high. Now, 53% of women who come to seek fertility treatment are depressed. The Association of Childless Couples of Ghana are working very hard to reduce the cost of IVF, and the cycle has usually cost between 6,000 to 9,000 Ghana CDs, and they're hoping to bring it down to about 500, working with um, medical facilities and the government. They're hoping to bring it down to about 500 CDs so that it is more affordable. Another interesting thing I found out um, about this is that in 2013, the Ghana Statistical Service and the Judicial Service um, released data that showed that um, indirectly, fertil infertility and childlessness was the number one reason for divorce okay. in Ghana. Um, so obviously, it's important that we have other ways of um, facilitating childbirth. And, and IVF obviously has always had very high um, success rates, except that it has been expensive in the past. So so good news and congratulations to um, UQ Hospital in Takrade for, for doing that. I know UQ Hospital is on my way home. Interesting. Uh, congratulations to all the great doctors who are working there. Yo. Way home from where? I was on my way home from work. Ah, okay. Who <laughs> 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 the clarity on the matter? <laughs> I, I want to stay in the medical field anymore because um, some journalists have been visiting Rwanda to take a look at Zipline's medical drone delivery um, system. Yeah, so we talked about this a lot in the past few months, um, but apparently we should be ready to take off um, by the end of the first quarter. So um, the project, which is the first of four to be constructed in the country, will serve areas within the eastern region, Afran Plains, Volta region, Greater Accra region, and the Ashanti region. So what's going to happen is that blood and medications are going to um, be sent by these drones. And these journalists went to Rwanda to um, see how the deliveries are made and how the whole system works. So what's going to happen when we start running this here is that there'll be pharmacists who'll be on standby. They'll wait for orders for blood supply from a select number of hospitals and medical facilities. The orders will come in either emergency orders or restocking orders. Once the orders are made the pharmacist determine from that call and there'll be a, a whatsapp page as well for that once the order is confirmed the blood will be um, loaded onto the drone which it's instructive to note will not have a camera and so the um, drone will not be able to take pictures um, on any level and so the, the blood or the medicines will be loaded onto the drone and then it will go and deliver. What happens is that when it gets to the destination it doesn't stop it will drop in a designated zone the blood products or the medicine and then it will come back and then um, the technicians will bring it down now the argument for this has always been the speed and the efficiency of the drones and the saving of money when it comes to fuel and other costs um, as well. So end of second quarter we're looking forward to having the drones um deliver blood blood products and medical supplies now of course our own matilda Wemega was with the team of journalists who went among other friends from other media houses and it seemed to be a very insightful trip we wait to see what the implementation will be like the many issues we raised here about the procedures the cost of running such an operation and how effective it's supposed to go through the process all the procurement issues we raised here have they fixed all of them I can't say that. I can't answer that question. <laughs> but it's a good question to the authorities. It's a good question to the authorities. Um, before we do anything else, yes. Raymond, let's mm -hmm. finish off with the Tishi desalination plant to resume in March. I don't know if it's supposed to be good news because, one, um, there were concerns raised that virtually every month we're spending six six million Ghana cities are making sure that water runs through the pipes from there. The plan of desalination is to make sure that we can take seawater, which is mostly salty, remove the salt from it in some form of a process and of course, I mean, there are several forms of purifying water. The main complaint was from the people in Teshi who were beneficiaries directly of this particular plant. They virtually rejected the water and said that there is no real difference between the desalinated water and the seawater that they have known and that 
at is still not in a very drinkable state and they are not they, that's not the kind of water they prefer you do recall that for a very long time Tishi had problems with water it was almost like the Cape, Cape Coast problems with water that prevented very bright students from going to school there and now there's having problems in that part of the country now when you bring it back home what we know is going to happen is that they are still renegotiating where the ran- people are running the plant. In 2011, the company was asked to put together this wonderful plant so that we can use seawater and give the people some good drinking water to consume in there. Now, the board chairman of the Ghana Water Company Limited has also been complaining about what the future is going to be like and whether or not we should take the desalination plant out of their scope or completely make sure that we diversify it if the renegotiation doesn't happen. So, operations, yes. But have we resolved all the theming issues to do with the cost, especially when the water company consistently complain about not being able to meet their cost and that they are getting they are incurring so much debt in the process and it's making it close to impossible for them to continue with even overhead anyway. Interesting. And we'll be keeping our eye on that one because, mm-hmm. of course, we all need to drink water, don't we? Yes. I remember when it said that we were receiving water from the desalination plant at 6 cities, 50 pesos per yeah. gallon, mm-hmm. whilst we are getting water from other sources for about 1 city, 50 yeah. pesos mm-hmm. uh, per gallon. Um, so it's important that we keep our eye on, on, on that story. Now, the online news review is what we are doing now. It's brought to you by Zenith Bank in your best interest, Goyal Good Energy. Now, it's a new year and it's still good energy with Goyal, your reliable energy partner. Enhancing your engine performance and prolonging the life expectancy of your vehicle should be a top priority. So continue to get the best quality and value for money from Goyal Super XP and Diesel XP and trusted range of lubricants from our 360 service stations across the country. To all our valued customers, we say thank you. We value our partnership with you. Because of you, we are still number one and still CIMG Petroleum Company of the Year. Let's continue the partnership to build our economy. Goyle, good energy. Goyle, proudly Ghanaian. Goyle, Yenara Yedia. Now, bank lights with Zenith Bank. How? By Zenith Internet Banking. Use Zenith Bank's upgraded internet banking service to effect instant transfers, view account statements, top up investments, request for checkbooks, block your card, pay bills, and so much more. Sign up for free and bank light with Zenith Bank. Zenith Bank, always in your best interest. MyJohnLine.com is where we begin. Abandoned Maslock vehicles still in good shape and selling slowly. That's the CEO of the Microfinance and Small Loans Centre, Stephen Amwa. Stephen Amwa, who was speaking on the back of Manas Azui investigation, Grounded Wheels, where we found that 350 vehicles have been left abandoned um, now, the, the point really is that these vehicles were overpriced by some 18 million Ghana cities. It's still a matter of a matter in court that we are looking at. And so our eyes are keenly on this one. But it's good to know that at least we, have, we are making use of the vehicles and that they are being sold, even though they are being sold slowly. We'll check and see how many have been sold so far. It's an important question to ask. There's an op-ed that you want to read by Kofi Boateng. On myjohnline.com, it says, The way to create a happy society is to unearth the talents of the young. I agree with you, Mr. Boating, even though journalists are not supposed to give opinions. But I saw what happened at Kids Olympics this weekend, last Saturday, at St. Anthony's Anglican Church, where you found children running energetically. And what really excited me the most was to see people who had trained. Like these are children about five or six years old up to the age of 12, who have dedicated their time to actually train, go to the park and run repeatedly ahead of this event. That alone is an act of discipline. Whether your child becomes a sportsman or not, the discipline of preparing for something and delaying gratification to become good at something and developing your skill at something, is something you can never learn. It's a, I mean, you need it in life, when, whether you're working as a businessman, you're working as a journalist, whatever you're doing. So yes, read this one. Uh, the way to create a happy society is to honor the talents of the young. It's, it's great. It's great. Uh, the BBC.com says a UN official has blasted Buhari over the top the top judges' suspension. Remember when we dealt with this story on Corruption yeah. Watch a couple of weeks ago, the removal of the Chief Justice of Nigeria. Yes, and a lot of flack has come from international quarters and locally. 
to Mr. Buhari. Right, it's time for us to go, but before that, anymore. Should I tell you another way you can improve society? Bring your wife to the lover's dinner and dance on Thursday. Bring your girlfriend, and if you're single, bring yourself. Um, it's at the Kempinski Gold Coast Hotel. Um, tickets are available here at um, the front desk of Joy FM. So pop in. It's 800 CDs for a couple um, and 400 CDs for single, 500 CDs for VIP um, single. So come in and, and grab a ticket and make the world a better place. Yes. This, please, <laughs> this is very, very insightful coming from a fellow woman. Make the world a better place by bringing a woman to the place. Yes. Uh, you never know how it would impact on your world. Okay, guys. It's time for the BBC News at 7. It comes up after this. We all wander through life, wondering how to get to the top. We all aim for the best. 